Hi Nia, how you doing? You alright? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I um really appreciate you being on the podcast. It really means a lot. Uh, I'm also appreciating and I'm honored to be part of this podcast and um, I really appreciate your passion for these podcasts. I mean, seeing like so many podcasts you have been doing quite, quite on a frequency, a frequent basis. So your passion is very much evident. So I appreciate mm. your efforts you're putting into this and I'm really thankful being called on this platform. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're very, very welcome. And, um, and you know, I'm really grateful, you know, for what you said. And, um, you know, it's great to connect with someone who's passionate about, you know, about podcasting and you know what in what you're doing as well yeah but like, but like you do you're a um, you know like a gratitude and forgiveness coach so kind of like how did you kind of get into that and so uh, I love myself to be called as a forgiveness and a gratitude coach and I am an internationally certified heal your life workshop leader and um, I, I actually like helping people to release their suppressed emotions so we all have those anger and those hurt feelings in the past, maybe 10 years down the line. So we all have those kind of feelings. So I actually help people to release those kind of stuff and to live a life of quite an awareness, a conscious living, what you call it. So how did I got into it? I let you know. So I think it's kind of a journey. It's like, uh, I mean, it doesn't happen like, like this. It actually goes a long way back. So around five years back, I could say. So I think... Um, from the childhood itself, I was I was very good at academics. I was really the topper ever. And I did my engineering and uh, I got placed, campus placed. And I did my MBA, I again got campus placed. And I was very confident in speaking and giving presentations and life was kind of very smooth for me till then. Mm. But then if you ask me why I did all of that, I did not have any answer. Mm. I mean... Uh, why I did engineering, why I did MBA, I really don't have an answer. Why? Because I was just following the herd. So I was just doing what, uh, like, you know, because in my society, in the places around me, everybody was like, if you have to be successful, you need to be an engineer, you need to be an mm-hmm. MBA, and you start getting good, uh, you know, good job, a good, good salary. That is how success was measured. And I just followed it. So there was no particular interest in me to be into engineering or into an MBA and which branch should I take? No, not any kind of that. So then, um, so since I was not into all of that, but yeah, one thing was sure, like when I look down, I see that time internally, I felt I did not have any opinions. So I was like a kind of a people pleaser. So everybody said this, so I would follow that. And you know, like, um, I mean, I, it was very important for others approval of me, like what they thought about me, their validation. So I had a very uh, low self-esteem, what I can say. And in fact, I also told you right now that I was very confident in giving presentations. But then when it came to expressing what I felt, like how I'm feeling, I was not interested. I mean, I was not able to talk about it. Like it was very difficult to talk those inner truths, like how I feel. So I had those kind of those emotions were all stuck. I can't express myself. But yes, confident in giving presentation. This is this, this is it, like, you know, that way. So that's how Mm. I look at myself like five years down the line. And like, and since I said that my uh, self-esteem was very low, so um, I always needed this achievement to boost my self-esteem. So I used to top my school, top my college or whatever. So it actually boosted my self-esteem. And that's how I showed to others that I'm quite successful. So Mm. it was always to show others that thing was always so much particular, you know, so much peculiar in me. Mm. So I remember I wanted to be work for Google because that is how, that is how I saw me to be successful. I wanted to work for Google and, you know, Facebook, such kind of organization. So I can actually show others that see, I mean, this is what I've reached. And that is how the first book came into picture. The first life savior, which actually transformed my life, which I recommend. I think everybody has read most of the people. And that is Mm. by Robin Sharma, the monk who sold his Ferrari. If you have Mm. read, if you have not. So I recommend all the viewers as well to read that book. Because that made me think that I don't have to show others like, you know, what I am, how much I'm capable. Rather, I have to find a purpose for myself. Like what gives me satisfaction? What is something that is so much, uh, you know, 
intrinsic happiness intrinsic satisfaction i gain like it makes my day something which i can do for 24 cross 7 and i still mm. don't get bored and just love doing it like for you it might be your podcast like you can do it like you said you do 3 4 5 in a day and still you're doing it so you just yeah, love yeah. doing it and even putting those hard work into it it doesn't you don't feel that hard work of course you're putting your efforts of course you're putting your time but we don't realize it so on the same lines it was very clear to me that i had to find out a purpose but my passion was not yet discovered i just knew that i don't have to stop showing to others what i want mm. and uh, like to working for others i have to live for myself but what is it i was yet not able to discover so that that was that was the first phase which changed the uh, robin sharma changed my life So now the next thing was since I was working and I'm still working as an HR professional. So I take care of the learning and uh, learning and development area as well as employee engagement at my organization. So well, the course of a lot of trainings we conduct for our employees, and um, I realized it's one of the trainings I came across the Secret Movie by Rhonda By Byron mm. and the Law of Attraction. So I, at that time, I was like, this was the first time when I actually heard about it. And if all my viewers have not seen this, so I would again recommend to please go through this book and this movie. So that was a time when um, I was like, I got some magic wand, like you know, mm. whatever I want to do, I can achieve and I can manifest whatever I want. So I was like really very happy, and I started with small, small experiments. So I still remember I even told my colleagues in my office to have those uh, vision board in next to mm. their cubicle. So they, everybody of us has those, you know, some printouts with something what they want to manifest and small, small things. And we actually manifested whatever we wanted. Like a friend of mine wanted to learn French. I wanted to have my own car. So we all manifested in a month. So we were all really happy. be and excited wow we've got something but then but then it was not that happy in the end like it was short lived mm. because when i started to manifest something big it wasn't working and mm. after 2 3 months there was a time when i actually went through a very low low period in my life mm. like a very lot of struggles at my office lot of struggles at my relationships so it was mm. a very bad time and i started to manifest the same thing and it did not help me out so i was like why it is not working like what's what's going wrong okay yes yeah, so, fine fine yeah if you can just excuse. yeah don't worry yes yeah, fine okay so we can continue it's fine Yeah, I'm so sorry. Just let's wait. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. So what? Okay. Uh, I was talking you, about. Okay, fine. Yeah, you're talking about. Um, yeah, I got, it, I got it. So I was talking about like I was going through a very low period and both mm. in my relationships, at my work, and this was not helping me. I was not able to manifest. So mm. I was like quite shattered. Like, what is happening? And you know, like. that way it was like very 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 bad phase hmm. and after this 2 3 months of going through a really hard time i think it said that if you are ready the teacher appears if a student is ready the teacher appears and then came the second book which again changed my life and that hmm. was the very transformation in my life that was uh you can heal your life by louis hay so i again hmm. suggest this book to everybody i think it's once in a lifetime read it's a book which actually can change your life and i'm going to talk about a few incidents how did it so this is something which i read and i got answers to all my questions so that was something which uh, which actually helped me a lot so since i was going through a bad phase like i talked about the anger so i had anger and hurt for a lot of people for a lot of such people but then again i was not good at expressing so all these things were there down deep in me so once i was reading this book i realized that all these suppressed emotions actually if you do not know how to vent it out and how to you know release them in a positive way so they all actually get suppressed and they they are there in your body so even after like 10 years you've forgotten but you've not forgiven like it is still there just suppress suppress and they are like that so it is these emotions come out in the form of various diseases 
So if you have any sort of diseases, any kind of, even the biggest diseases like cancer is a result of such suppressed emotions. And that's how they are called as psychosomatic diseases. Now, this was something which was very important because I wanted, because from childhood, I've never expressed like how I have felt, what are my feelings and I've not given importance to me. So it was that time when, um, it was actually that time when I actually um, started uh, releasing and releasing and, you know, these pent up emotions. So I got some way how to do it and it had helped me a lot. And when I started doing it for myself, they were always my friends. So I would always like to share it. See, I did this and you can also try it. So I like to talk about a friend of mine when I helped her out. So there was this friend of mine. She was, uh, she had, uh, she was in a relationship and it did not go well. So then these guys have separated. And even after two years, when a guy has moved up, she was all still I mean, physically, they were not in touch, but then she was all, also that, you know, that emotionally she had those things like, oh, mm. it's like, I mean, she was always, she was also thinking about her, him and she mm. was not able to move out. So even though it was two years, she has forgotten a lot of things, a lot of things were suppressed, but then she was not able to move ahead in her life. So then I asked her, why don't you try such thing? And she was a good friend of mine. And I actually helped her out to go through this forgiveness exercise for two, three days, which mm. she went. So she actually, and, it, and trust me, this is not an easy thing because you have to go through what all hurt and, you know, those memories again. So it's, it actually requires a lot of courage. So when she actually went through all of this again, and she released it for once and for all. So it was that time when, um, like, after a week, she comes and tells me my migraine is all gone. And I was mm. like, okay. And then she's like, you know, when this thing happened, like when we had this breakup and all my migraine had come that time. So, but I was not aware of it. And her migraine has all gone. So these, mm. it had impact on her, uh, these emotions had impact on her health this way. Now everybody has different impacts. So I can't uh, like tell you. I mean, how is it going to impact you? But if this definitely going to impact you, that is for sure. Mm. So this is something which I learned and I don't know what all it was giving me, but I had also <laughs> done a lot of release work. And I remember when I was doing forgiveness initially, when I initially learned about it, I did it on a lot of people in my life, both at work and at my home and a friends and a lot of people. And I lost a lot of weight. I mean, mm. can you believe it? Like I lost around five kgs or something. Wow. And like in a span of like two months while I was doing this exercises on a daily basis. And I was like, oh my God, so much is there in my body and I'm storing it. So I mean, that is how it was that powerful because we are storing it. We're just not aware of it. So that was one. And so I recommend this book to everybody. There's another thing which, um, now before that, since I did this and I actually helped a few people, I'm also going to talk about another story. Mm. So, but I got like, you know, I actually fell in love with this book. And mm. uh, so I actually went to do a training, uh, like two day training of this heal your life work. And mm. I liked it. And like, I had found that this was my passion. So I had finally figured it out that this was my passion. And then I did that international seven day certification in person. There's, you have to go to a place and then they carry this out. This, so mm -hmm. then I did that international certification of Heal Your Life, which was again life-changing. And that's how it just started with. But then, yes, this book also taught me secondly, which was very essential, was self-love. So like, I remember if you don't love yourself unconditionally, if you don't accept yourself unconditionally with all your flaws, you can't expect to others to love you. Because if you yourself don't accept yourself, how can you expect others to love you, right? So... Mm. Um, I remember, I mean, we all have flaws. Nobody of us are perfect. But then it's very essential that, you know, we accept ourselves. Because if you don't, so, I mean, you can't expect others to don't criticize you if you yourself are criticizing yourself. And that is something mm. which is very essential, which that is self-love, which Louise Hay talks a lot in this particular book. Mm -hmm. So that was the second thing. And I also like to talk about, uh, again, uh, personal counseling, which I did. Uh, which again, you know, it gave me a lot of satisfaction. Of course, there are a lot mm. of such stories, but then uh, this one is again special. So uh, there was this guy who was a gay 
and um, I did not know him. It was in my friend's office. And he was having a really bad time because he had this habit, you know, like, mm. which because of which a lot of people made fun of him. And in India, especially, these things are not that acceptable. Mm. So, you know, like, there's a lot of societal pressure and, you know, people are not that open to it. So then even his family was not supportive and uh, even uh, in the work, people all made fun of him in spite of whatever his work was. Everybody was just trying to make fun of him. They were not respecting him. And he had grown so less, like he was like this, you know, he was not even, even able to talk to anybody. That low self-esteem, I mean, very bad. Even at times of thinking of committing a suicide, it was that bad. So then, and he did not even talk to me directly. He was like that feeling low. And, you know, that's, such kind of times do happen. So then I just suggested my friend, ask him to do, you know, like self-love exercises, a few of the self-love exercises. And uh, she made him do that. I mean, she asked him to do it. It's very simple. You just have to do a few affirmations and do a few mirror work that I really, really love you and I accept you exactly as mm. you are. Such kind of affirmations for 5, 10, 15 minutes on a daily basis. So once she did all of that, I mean, she told her to do this and I get a call from her after six months telling me that that guy is congratulated. I mean, she's thanking me. Why? Mm. Because now he sends a picture where he has a ring of I written here. Okay. And I'm like, okay, now what does that stand for? So she says, he has said that this means that he is engaged to himself mm. and he's in love with himself and he's really happy now. And now he has shifted his job. So he's in a place where everybody respects him for he is and his work, not for how, what all actions he do or about his sexuality. So everybody kind of accept him. And now he's kind of very happy. He feel, you know, acceptable. And that is mm. why he's happy. So these things do help you. And I'm not saying that probably your flaws or something, if you have, we're going to disappear. But then you accept yourself. So you will find people who also accept yourself. So mm. you kind of feel happy about it. So that these are the various things which this book actually helped me to understand. And there's another thing, like I was wondering, why is this manifestation not working for me? So that was another question, which I always had in my mind. Mm. So then uh, I realized that uh, we all, the universe is all abundant, mm. you know, and it is just, we have our limiting beliefs. We have those beliefs which stop us from attending those, uh, those abundance. Mm. So like, uh, I mean, like everybody of us has some issues. Somebody might have in career, like he might not like his bosses, his colleagues, his subordinates, or he might not like the policy, the, the system. So there might be mm. any of such things. Even in your relationship, you might have issues with your own parents or you would have your, if you are married, you might have with your spouse, with your children, or even your in-laws or your relatives or the society or your work relations. So you can have any of these emotions, right? Relation issues, mm. even in your health, you might have issues in your own health or whatever or you might be very thin, or you might be very fat, very obese. So you might have, a, you have, might have a hair fall issue. Or, I'm just giving examples. Mm, mm. So we all have such things. But if you kind of just, you know, just stop, I mean, and start waiting, being complacent, it will go someday, the time will change, the things will not happen. You will not automatically become fat if you are thin, mm. or you will, you know, this will not happen. So you have to take responsibility for ourselves, and we have to change the out. Uh, we have to change the input if we have to change the output. So, so mm. this is something which all this book helped me to understand. And, and this actually helped me realize my passion. And so uh, kind of I, I did my course and then I started doing on a small, small scale, little basis. Mm. So wherever I got chances, so that's how it started with. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what you're doing. And I think, you know, the things that you touched on are pretty incredible as well. Like you mentioned the story where, uh, you know, you're helping people to, get, you know, affirm themselves and kind of, you, you know, start using the law of attraction, and that self love and, you know, those, um, uh, affirmations, you know, like, like self love. 
and how that those small kind of like seeds can really like you know change someone's life and you know start loving themselves and i think like you said with that guy who's going into the workplace and people making fun of them fun of him you know he was probably thinking and putting out to the universe oh these people are thinking x y z about me but when he started accepting you know accepting it accepting himself you know the other people were going to be accepting him because he's in acceptance okay. and i think and i think like with um you know the power the power of you know our minds you know belief systems like there's that uh quote isn't they like thoughts become things yes and, exactly um i think like with that psychosomatic thing as well, you know, like in relationships or in emotions, how we hold emotions, like what you said. I, I noticed when I um, was in a relationship and I broke up with this particular person, um, I remember like I had lots of like, I was coughing a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's like my body was shifting something. And I was yeah. literally like, you know, shifting something from my chest, mm-hmm. you know, because of the, you know, the pressure and things on me in that particular relationship. Yeah. Um, which was, you know, I, I didn't even know what was going on. Um, but it just shows you the power that we have, you know, as exactly. people to, to make something that we want to make. You know, we, it's, like you said, it comes down to your belief system. And a lot of these beliefs, you know, come from childhood, society. and. Exactly it's i find it really fascinating i think it's nice that you're helping people you know to uh be 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 their best self you know yeah in fact i feel that uh like you said we all are very unique like we all are gifted with something so it's it's just a matter of discovery and you know uh We just need to identify what is that something which makes us me, like, you know, which gives us that life, that's something which we are passionate about. Because once we identify that passion, what it is, then your life changes and you have some motive that this is what I need to achieve. It's it's a different feeling. I can't express it. But Mm -hmm. yes, you have that you want to live for that. And you can be you just can be doing that 24 cross seven and still be so happy. Yes, I did it. And you have a sense of achievement because it is just, you know, it's so much you that you, if you have that passion. Mm. So I, I just want like all the viewers, whoever are listening that you all are unique. You all are gifted and you have something which makes you different, which, uh, which, which has a creativity, you know, which is something which is, which is just you, which are just you, that uniqueness in you. So you just have to identify and it can be anything. It can be writing a poem. It can be, if you're good at speaking, it can be. It can be becoming mm. a radio jockey. So it, it can, if you're like cooking, so it can be even cooking for anything. So you just have to figure it out what that small thing is that you're really good. Mm. And uh, I think this coronavirus, this COVID-19 has given each of us enough time to identify our passion because we all have got into, you know, so much time for ourselves that we're able to figure it out that, yeah, this is something I like. I mean, mm. on the Facebook, if you see, or even on Insta, so many people have tried so many recipes, so many mandalas and, you know, the paintings and the sketchings have all come up and mm. even making videos. So many things that have been happening. So I think this time we have actually been given a lot of time to introspect and actually identify what is it that rather than working for somebody else, what is that mm. I want to work for myself, which just makes my day. And um, a few of you, I'm sure, would have actually identified what is that that actually makes you going. So if you know your passion, I have a few set of uh, kind of suggestions if you'd like to try. Yeah, yeah. So if you know your passion, I just suggest that once you identify your passion, just secondly, uh, first step is to identify your passion. Second is to uh, just develop on your passion. That means to start giving little, little time on a daily basis or on a weekly basis and start working towards your passion. So uh, like if you know, like dancing, so start dancing on a regular basis. I mean to say is you need to upgrade your passion. So in the way you can join some classes, you can now everything is available online. So you can join some courses, some classes and so that you know a next level of what you like. 
because if you survive at next level that means there's something which you're really st- serious about and if you mm. do not survive that if you like you get bored that means that was never your passion so you need to first be clear of is that something which you really like about it so once you uh, once you like kind of get into more into it by joining some classes or some workshops you're actually developing the next level and now when you develop the next level the third step which is very essential is that you need to identify who are the top people in that field who are the best in that field so what are they doing which you are not doing like mm. you know so uh, like how they make a difference so like suppose you are into podcast so you might identify the best people the best podcast who have heard like million times so what are they mm. doing differently that you are not doing right now so you know this will help you to learn a lot and you'll also know that is how makes it different so and you will get ideas i'm not saying to copy them but you will get ideas this is how i can make my podcast different so even if it comes to dancing you can just start following the people who are good in dancing if you are into painting you can start following the people who are really good in painting and now i think uh, we are so much connected through internet so you have instagram you have twitter you have youtube channels you have facebook pages so we have so much easily accessibility to all such talents so we can be kind of aware of what are these guys doing and once you are aware see you will also realize the more you start working on it say continuously for 6 months or for an year that what is the niche area which you like to work as an mm. example now suppose you like dancing okay now suppose you like dancing so you will realize i like to dance kind of a zumba i mean exercise based dance okay mm. or i like to dance say uh, the marriage dance you know in india we have a lot of people who do those kind of dance bhang you know bhang mm, and mm. kind of those ganesh and all those you know those kind mm, of dances mm. so which kind of dance you like to do in some marriage ceremonies or what or you might understand i want to do some theater performance or some stage performance so you will understand what is that area which you are into now suppose you say i want to do some dances for marriage ceremonies that is something which is my forte okay so that is my forte now suppose you understand like that so mm. in that case in that case you will think what i would like to teach the people who are really good in dancing so i would like to tell them about the choreography or the people who are shy in dancing to teach them how to dance for some function for those destination weddings probably or something like that so you will come to you know those uh, like that it's like a ladder so different mm. different steps so i i like dancing i like marriage dancing to teach people who are going for a destination wedding and mm. i would like to teach people who are really shy in dancing so you get even more specific about it so i hope you get it it goes in every area even if it's yeah. painting so initially you might think about i would like to make painting in canvas or it's like sketching even if it's sketching then i would like to make a doodle art or a mandala so you will become more specific what is your niche area now if you like even in the podcast what i notice for you is you have been more into personal development right mm. so there might be some people who are doing podcasts or only relationship or only health or only spirituality right so this is your d area your forte because this is something which interests you mm. so everybody has different area of interest you need to identify what that interest is now once you do it you get to that specific thing then you can actually start you know connecting that purpose that what you have what is your passion with a purpose so you can start helping people you know you can like your intent can be to serve people now how are you serving by sharing right mm. so this is this is way so initially it might happen that you have to do it for free mm. free in the sense uh, you know charging or such things uh you might do it for some end, like if suppose it's a painting or it's an event management you might do it for an ngo or if suppose mm. you are a designer the graphic designer you might do it for some some you know some uh fundraising events or something so i'm just giving mm. sample of example so you can start doing for free because you will learn a lot and that's kind of a service which you're doing but trust me if you do it there would be a time when you will be very successful because people will know to whom to look at if you want to get this thing done and then you will start earning so that fame and name and money and everything will definitely follow it's just initial time you have to do a lot of work but mm. end result is you're getting what you always wanted to do and it's that mm. happiness what you are loving right yeah uh 
I also feel there are times when people just say, let me finish my, I don't have time. I have a family and I have my children and I have this job and I don't have time. So I do it after I get retired. Mm. But I feel, uh, see that time never comes. And we can't wait for retirement because we've not even seen if we'll able to reach that retirement. I mean, mm. life is so unpredictable. So how can you just, you know, just delay it till then? And also, I mean, it is not always money which is to be given. It is your time and efforts also. So even if you if you give it on a weekly basis, but it just makes your life alive. So that's what I mm. think. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree, agree with you. And I think you made some really good points. And I think like, um time and you know the, the excuses people use you know like saying oh i'm too busy i haven't got time and yeah i understand you know people were busy and you know they've got their own lives but you know just making that little bit of time even if it's half an hour a day and i talk about compound interest sometimes and you know it's like if you do that one percent of something each and every day or However, however many days, that one percent is going to build over time. You know, whatever that is, yes. and that's you know what I've learned. You know, if that's like working out, if that's reading, if that's podcasting, whatever. You know, it's just gonna build bit by bit, and you know, it's just making that little bit of time and not waiting to retire to do it. You know, or because that's some. You know, it, it's it's just like that kind of mindset some people have. And I, I think, like you said, as well, with, with niches and finding your thing is, is key. Like, you kind of have to find your kind of like why and that kind of, like you said, that, that, that ladder to the, the thing within that thing that you're doing. Like you said, you could be doing a podcast or you could be doing dancing, but what are you doing within that? Um, you know, that's, that's something I'm still figuring out in coaching, you know, like, like in life. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Am I talking See, too fast? Am I talking too fast? Is okay. No, no, no. Fine. <laughs> and, and actually, it's right. See, we are always figuring out. It's always a journey. So it doesn't happen like overnight that you will, you know, just discover I got a dream. This is my life purpose. No, it doesn't happen. It's always a process and it's like an onion, you know, it gets revealed mm. slow by slow, slow by slow. But that journey is also very beautiful. Like, kind of learn a lot during that so it's lovely yeah because i i did a podcast with this guy recently um, i haven't published it yet but he said it's like we need to be like a caterpillar okay and he said you know the cat the perspective of a caterpillar you know it's on the ground it's seeing everything so big and he says we need to get uncomfortable yes. you know in that cocoon and then go through that process. And then, so when you come out as a butterfly, yeah. you see things in a different perspective. You see things in a different way, which yeah. I think is quite a good way to look at things, isn't it? Yeah. And I completely believe that. I also completely believe this. It's before becoming a butterfly, you always have to go through that journey, that cocoon, from cocoon to butterfly. And if suppose you do not go through it, if suppose you get a lot of help, you will be handicapped, you know, because you will not be able to uh, live that life on your own because you were dependent on others to helping you out of that cocoon. So you actually have to do it yourself. You have to take the responsibility that yourself. And if you do it yourself, of course, it's going to be very hard, very struggling, but you will gain a lot of confidence. Yes, I did it. So that thing after that was also very, uh, you know, I mean, so much satisfying because you did it yourself. So, mm. so rather than, I mean, you know, like um, on others, depending on others that he's going to come to me as a savior and no, and the blaming he did not come or my parents did not do that. So it's rather let's take control of ourselves, be responsible for ourselves. And if you feel responsible for yourself, you create your own life, what you want. So that's something which is essential. Mm yeah yeah no I, I agree and i think like you feel better you feel more like you know satisfaction through doing you know yourself and going through it and coming out the other end like i, I see I see on your linkedin like you um god it is you, you went try you traveled and you helped 
loads of people. There's like a, fo- I think on your your banner photo, you yeah. you're with loads of uh, school kids, is it? Yeah, no, no, there are school kids. Yeah, I did a I did a workshop for yoga teachers. So that was nice. they are young people, but yes, I did around seventy five people where I did a workshop on a small workshop, a four hour workshop on forgiveness and self love. So it's like managing your emotions and self love. So we did a, this workshop. Um, 75 of them yeah it was an amazing experience and mm. uh, the same things what I talked about because everybody has some or the other emotions which is inside mm. and which is kind of blocking their you know their parts mm. so we need to get those things out because just understand it's like a cup if you don't take those negativity out you can't put some positivity inside and negativity mm. is so much there across us like if you see news if you see newspapers you see whatever there's a lot of more negativity rather than because we kind of focus on negativity we kind of don't mm. focus on positivity so we have to take that out and we have to start filling it positivity mm. so i still remember there was this guy who asked me why i have to fill positivity i don't have to fill negativity it just goes in so i said because yeah. you see newspaper you see news new you see and the kind of people talk to everybody it's more like negative things more you know this happened this happened all those stuff so negativity is so much happening we don't even realize that we are so much prone to negativity even at the tv if you see uh, like especially in india the series this like you know the mother-in-law doing this thing to the daughter-in-law so there's a lot of such things all negative negative stuff happening the robberies and so much crimes so mm. that is so much in there in there that we don't even realize that we are filling our cup with negativity but when mm. we fill with positivity it takes us so much pain because we have not done that before we're not used to it in, even in our mm. schools we're not taught about so that is why my second thing comes into picture is about gratitude mm. and this gratitude is something which is like so essential because uh what gratitude does is it changes it shifts your focus so you start actually mm. focusing on what good happened in your life today so mm. i actually ask everybody of my friends to make a gratitude journal or you know for 10 minutes at least write down what all good things happened throughout your day today and you, it has to be like i am grateful for two like i'm grateful to my mom for cooking a good food for me so like you have mm. to mention the person as well as why you are and Uh, like you want uh, like for 7 days for 10 days probably things will not you will not realize but after mm. continuous doing for 21 days you will definitely you have to feel that difference you will feel yourself very positive you will feel that things positive things happening to you because that is what like attracts like so you are mm. you know att- you are actually thinking those positive stuff so it definitely will do happen to you and another thing what i have realized is uh we actually are gifted in a lot of things so if you look at our human body i mean i'm able to see i'm able to talk i'm able to listen but we don't say grateful for that so we don't it is our focus where we focus on we are not focusing on what what is good things happening to us so we need to shift our mindset and that's something which is very really essential so um you know this this is something this is a different lifestyle altogether it will not happen mm. in two days 21 days even there are times when 21 days i practice gratitude and then there was like i'm done i don't want to do it more <laughs> think the happening good and you always falter it's like normal then again there was some time which was not good so again i started again so then then later on after a year or two it started becoming a lifestyle and so you start doing it and now you don't even have to sit in a place you can just drive your car and start being grateful you know mm. you have to be creative your ways there was a friend of mine now while she was bathing she was bathing and she used to be grateful oh i'm grateful my cook came i'm grateful this happened <laughs> so that's how so you can be grateful as such you don't have to find out a separate time for it yeah yeah No, I agree, and I think gra- being gra- you know having that gratitude list is like a big thing, and I think it really helps because it kind of gives you that perspective as well. It kind of makes you quite ground. It kind of grounds you, I find, in you know the present moment, yes. and you start to see things in a different way. You know, even the I think the small things as well. Like I, I've started doing it. You know, I, I try and do it every day, but. Um, I like, you know, I write down, you know, I'm grateful for, you know, nature, you know, and things like that. Things that you don't really usually think about, 
you start yes. finding you know gratitude for and um because and it makes you realize that you know there's people out there who've got it you know worse than you probably and you know the things that you might not appreciate so much other people appreciate probably 10 times over so it, you know you appreciate the small things isn't it have quite a big impact and like you yes. said you know you, you you might after a while um start doing it automatically if you're in the shower or if you're walking or something yeah yes so you don't have to you can be creative you don't have to be like that fixed about it that i have to sit mm. for a journal and do it so you can be very creative mm. and that's how it is yeah no it's it's really i think it's really important to talk about these things because i think like it's something that isn't really taught like these things we've been talking about it's not something that's taught in education and i think like if it yeah. was there'd probably be a lot less problems exactly you know? i um, i always felt the same like i came to know about secret the law of attraction and this gratitude and all these things like holistic health and everything so late once even i was did my i have done my mba and then i had mm. time for myself so i discovered it so i always used to wonder if i had known in my like you know childhood so when i was working for my entrance i would have just made a vision board i would have started practicing gratitude things would have yeah, been yeah. so easier rather than you know just so much working hard and everything because of course you have to work hard i don't deny it but you can always have use some mind power to achieve your goals which mm. we are not yet taught so and uh, and also there's one thing like of course the schools do not teach this where uh, of course uh, like the parents have become more conscious these days so i'm happy that a lot of people parents i come to know they are teaching their children gratitude and everything so i'm quite happy about it uh, there is a very good book on robin sharma by robin sharma on family wisdom where he also talks about these things like if you mm. do yourself these things your children will try them so rather than mm. telling your children do not watch tv and start studying you can start reading a book and your children mm. will follow and even they will start reading some books have a library at home so there are small things which even we just can't blame the parents i mean we just can't blame the schools even the parents becoming conscious can start doing for their kids and mm. yeah no I, i completely agree and um i've i've got a good friend of mine that i do podcasts with uh most weeks called uh safran he's he's based in india um west west bengal bengal is he based yes 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 there's and west bengal he he told me that i know like in india like family is very important in your culture yes. and he said like to me that when he has dinner with his family um you know there's no phones at the table you know dinner is very important i mean it, it's probably different for each family but he was saying you know they try not to go on their phone they ask about their day and i think like Uh, in in the western world like i've worked in restaurants and hotels and people have had children and they just plunk an ipad or a phone in front of them and i'm like just give give them a book or talk to them or you know and i think that there's that come i think that's the importance of like you know connectedness isn't it i mean yes it's not something we really think about but it's these key social skills isn't it and i think as yeah. people we need to talk we need to listen and if you can start that at an early age then i think you know it's it's great yeah and that's really good that for you know, at least in india you have a lot of people to hear you out and like you know but i think uh, when we had joint families where the families were living together we had this thing in india where see a father father's mother and father and even so you know those kind of big huge families when living together such kind of mental health issues were very less and even the children got a lot good um, you know the parenting was really good because they had so many people to talk about and all those things now what has happened is when the parents both the parents are working and a child feels lonely and then he doesn't have people to express and so comes a lot of mental health issues which are emerging and it's because of that because a lot of and even in metros there's a lot of time which gets wasted on roads because on commuting mm. so then you have a very little time for your family there's a friend of mine she tells me 
my husband goes 8 in the morning comes back 10 in the night you know already he's so tired mm. then of course he's not able to meet his child much and you know talk of course mm. the corona has gifted people this way because we have yeah. a lot of time with their families <laughs> so yeah. kind of kind of very grateful that at least parents are able to see their children growing up mm. otherwise they were just rushing rushing money money and that's mm. life that's how so a lot of time for introspection i feel yeah what is working what is not working where they can bring a change about mm. yeah no i agree i i've known a lot of people during this time to build businesses you know on on the side leave their job and they've discovered new things you know through this time so it's like a silver lining to it, you know, like on one side, okay, it's bad, but then on the other side, there's all this other goodness, you know? Yeah, right. Do, do, you, um, do you have any favorite books at all? I mean, you mentioned a few books, but do you have any favorites? Okay, so I, I think the entire Robin Sharma series, and especially mm. The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, Discover Your Destiny. Mm. I mean, these are one of my favorite books. Then I have Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. Mm. Um, there's another book by Louise Hay, The Power Is Within You. So these books are really good. And this will help you to st- stop blaming others for your happiness. You will start becoming more independent towards you. Mm. And a third thing, uh, one which is very good book, but which is of a different genre, uh, that is... Uh, Paramhans Yogananda's The Autobiography of a Yogi, if you have heard mm. about. So Autobiography of a Yogi, that book has something. I mean, I can't express it. But when you read that book, it it just takes you to another level. So I recommend mm-hmm. that book as well. Mm. And um, another book which has personally helped me a lot when I talked about I lost 5 kg. So the book which was mm. responsible for was uh, Radical Forgiveness. That is by mm. Colin Tipping. It's radical forgiveness. It's very very easy to understand. And it's like connecting the spirituality into emotions. There's one thing more I want like, to talk about. Mm. Like sure. I was, I always felt that I was very spiritual person. So mm. I felt a little different. I felt like I'm not, you know, everywhere I'm not able to adjust. And uh, probably I was not like the same age group. The friends of mine of the same age group, probably they like something which I did not and all those things. So I felt a little different in that way. Um, but then, uh, and so we all feel that we are spiritual and so I'm different. So there's something which there are times when people feel like that. But then I also realized while I was into HYL, Heal Your Life work, that we kind of suppress our emotions. And we kind of suppress our emotion and we directly go to the spiritual level and say, oh, we should not have anger for anybody. We should not have uh, guilt. I mean, not, you know, sh- I should not feel bad for him because he did this to me. Uh, that is his karma. And I shouldn't get into all of that because that's my karma and all those things. But I realized while I was into Heal Your Life work that, of course, I have a right to feel bad when he did this to me. Hmm. But the only thing is, rather than thinking bad for him, I have a positive way to vent it out. I can do a hmm. journaling. I can do a release letter and I can burn it out. So at least it's very essential to take all that anger out because if I don't take that anger out, Mm. it's going to be stay with me in my body and probably after three, five years, it's going to come out as some disease, right? Mm. Mm. So that's something which is very essential that uh, we don't need to suppress our emotions and rather take out our emotions in some positive way. So there can be something like you can have a boxing ring and you know, and you can Mm. just take it out or uh, you can just flush it out. You can do whatever Mm. you feel. It's not necessarily Mm. you have to burn it out. But of course, you don't need to send that letter to that person. You can have positive way of taking it out. But the taking it out is very essential because if you do not, it is there suppressed in your body. So that's what I've Mm. learned. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I really... I really think that's so true and I think um, you know where we we hold on to things and you see people you know especially with regret yes. you know like people holding on to regret and those emotions um, I mean the only, the only regret I have is selling my Pokemon cards many years ago which are now worth a lot of money on eBay and uh, this is off topic but but I was like you know I felt all this dread and I was like Oh man, why did I do that? And um, because they they're worth a lot of money now, but um, 
But then I was like, you know what? Okay, it happened. You have to let go of it and not, not hold on to it. Um, so, that, I mean, that, that's, a, you know, quite a funny example. Yeah, but, um, but um, yeah, you get people who they'll do things and, you know, resentment, you know, they might hate somebody, hold grudges. I know people who can hold grudges for, like, years and they wouldn't talk to somebody for, like, four years. I'm like, are you holding on to that? It's like carrying bricks on your back. Yes, exactly. And you wouldn't believe like when I did my forgiveness uh, work, I mean, I did my forgiveness work for somebody, some a person. And the next day that person messages me and says, how have you been? We have not talked for around two years. How are things? And I'm like, how is he messaging me today? So just mm. because the day before I did forgiveness work on him and the mm. next, he doesn't know that, but like, you know, so there are times when the person even contacts you and you realize, yes, something was done and something has happened. Mm. And also that this forgiveness or just man forgiveness is what? It's just releasing yourself, freeing yourself from all this anger and all these suppressed emotions. So mm. it is not necessary. It always has to be somebody else. It can, like you said, it can be for self also, because probably I have taken some decision and I might regret about it. So there's something which I need to do self-forgiveness. Or I might have done something for some my friend. And so I might have a guilt feeling, oh, I did that to her and, you know, those kinds. Mm. So it is not necessary that it always has to be somebody else. It always can be you, yourself. But of course, you are in that prison. So it's very essential that because we need to always remember is that whatever I did that time was the mm. best I could have done based on my knowledge, my experience and my awareness. Mm. So what I did was perfect. And now, of course, I have matured. So I realize if that's wrong, but the, I can't change the past. So what I can mm. change, the feelings about the past. That's it. Mm. That's in my control, yeah. right? Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. And I think, like, you feel such a relief as well through, like, you know, letting go and moving yes. through that. You know, and, like, sometimes if you do that, you kind of think, well, oh, you know, what is the point of me holding on to all that for exactly. that time? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really important. I think, like you said, and if people don't do that, then they said mental health, you know, is when people have physical pain, like you said, or illnesses, you know, that's kind of a result of like, you know, the mental side of it. And then, then has a physical effect, you know, a, a emotional effect, which then has a physical effect. And then people are taking medication exactly. to then treat that. And then they're taking another medication as well. And that, you know, you've got to then go all the way back, especially, I mean, it's kind of, you know, worldwide, but, you know, in, in America, especially, like, you know, with drugs and pharmaceuticals, it's absolutely insane. Um, yes. the, the people who've got, like, eight, might have ADHD or something like that, and they're taking, like, eight to ten different medications. <laughs> yes, so, but the root cause is not yet addressed. Mm. So if you constantly take the medication, you're not addressing the root cause, which has actually caused it. If you release that emotion, you're free. So you don't need yeah. those medications, right? Because you see that in people who've had like, you know, coaching or they have a session of therapy and then yeah. they're, they're, they're fine, you know, through those sessions and then no longer got that pain. Yes. It's so satisfying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. No, it's it's um you know it's really really great talking to you um you know about you know these topics and you know like the work that you do I find it you know really um, uplifting you know motivating positive and inspiring and I, you know I think you're doing a great job in what you're doing and you know the kind of person that you are. Thank you so much. And in fact, I am really honored to be a part of mm. this podcast. I'm sure a lot of people to get benefit from this. That's my intent for this podcast, mm -hmm. especially. And I also would like to appreciate for the work you have been doing. I mean, so mm. I mean, with everything, a lot of people are going to gain something. I mean, even if it's a bit, but then on mm. a constant level, you have been really doing a lot. I also feel that while we do for others, we also become a best version for ourselves. So I'm sure all the best. And I, I mean, I uh, give all my best wishes to you for all yeah. your success, uh, for all your future endeavors, all the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And, you know, same to you as well and what you're doing. Um, thank you so much. No, no, you're welcome. But no, have a, 
have, have a great day. Um, sorry, how can people get in touch with you on social media? Like, where, where can we find you on social media? Uh, social like, media? Yeah, like, like where, where can people find you? Like, on okay, LinkedIn, so I'm uh, very much active on LinkedIn. So you can access me, Neha Vadvani. I mean, with the where you would put this podcast, so they can actually find me on LinkedIn. I'm there on FB page, the Facebook page you can access. I'm also there on Instagram. So slowly, slowly, mm. I'm going to post and those things. Mm. So as of now, you can actually find me on a Facebook page and on LinkedIn and on Instagram with the same yeah. name, Neha Vadvani. Yeah. Yeah. No. Awesome. No, it's great. But no, but no. Um, I'll put all your description in the in the bio for you as well. Okay. So I'll message you if you wish. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. No. It was. It was really great. It was great talking to you. It was same. Uh, my pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much. Yeah. No. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm.